As with every James Gunn movie, observant fans will notice plenty of extra goodies and Easter eggs hiding in plain sight, and his latest superhero adventure is no exception. Here are several of the more subtle references and Easter eggs that you missed in The Suicide Squad. Moments before the battle on Jotunheim, Task Force X briefs the Thinker on the myriad ways he needs to behave himself lest they dispatch him with extreme prejudice. During this rooftop scene, Harley Quinn repeatedly interjects with jokey cautions about things like covering his mouth whenever he coughs. The Easter egg, however, is buried in one of these lines. If we find out you have personalized license plates, you don't. Vanity plates can often be annoying, so the line gets a laugh whether you read something deeper into it or not. But Harley's hatred of vehicle signage is actually a reference to her ex-boyfriend, none other than the Joker. It's also one of the only times in the Suicide Squad where they acknowledge the existence of the earlier film. In the previous outing for the titular team, the Joker was infamously played by Jared Leto. Much like everything else with the first movie, the initial response to his look was massive, promising internet buzz, but the final product has subsequently been deemed a disappointment. Symbolic of the Leto Joker's on-the-nose tendencies that made him hard to swallow was his vehicle, an adapted Infinity G35 dubbed the Vader. That vehicle also featured vanity plates that read, ha ha ha. Harley has since moved on in the relationship department, but clearly she still has some things that annoy her when it comes to her ex-Puddin. When the team assembles in a charming local Corto Maltese watering hole for a few drinks, the club contains several notable faces. One of the dancers is none other than Pom Clementia, the distinctive-looking Canadian-born French actor and model who played Mantis in 2017's Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, as well as Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. She doesn't have any lines this time around, but sharp-eyed James Gunn fans know that he has a tight, fun-loving group of friends and collaborators. It's fun to see her offering support for the filmmaker. You can also spot the legendary Lloyd Kaufman. He's the mastermind behind the Troma Entertainment Indie Film Factory and he's given rise to multiple film talents, including Gunn, who in 1995 got to start writing Tromeo and Juliet. It was at Troma that Gunn learned how to write and produce films, scout locations, work with actors, and make and distribute ads for the finished product. Gunn also worked on such other Troma productions as 1999's Terror Firmer. Kaufman can be spotted on the dance floor clinging to a young woman while dancing alongside Peacemaker, to be a fly on the wall for whatever conversation took place between those two. Gunn also pays tribute to his former mentor Kaufman with a blink and you'll miss it clip from Troma's most famous film, the 1984 cult classic The Toxic Avenger. Next time you watch The Suicide Squad, see if you can spot it. A pair of end credit scenes bring back two members of the Suicide Squad. These two characters could not be any more different, never met in the film, and would seem to have very different futures in the DC Extended Universe. First, we see the bizarre bug-eyed weasel resurrected, played on set by James's brother Sean Gunn, who also provided reference points for Rocket Raccoon in the Guardians of the Galaxy films. The character first appeared in the pages of DC Comics via 1985's The Fury of Firestorm No. 36. Believe it or not, the John Monroe version of Weasel was a Stanford University student and then a teacher at Vandermeer University. Much like Polka Dot Man, his presence in comics over the years has generally been as a punchline, both on the page and for fans in real life. In those early comics, he was a serial killer whose appearance came from a sharp-clawed costume. In the comics, he slashed the throat of the thinker, causing Rick Flagg to kill him. As far as the movie is concerned, Weasel is seen coughing up water and surviving the carnage on the beach. He scampers away, perhaps to head off into town to grab a drink with Lloyd Kaufman and Pom Clementia. In the second end credit scene, we see a pair of Waller's newly emboldened minions rushing to the hospital, shocked that someone survived the Battle of Jotunheim. You can be forgiven if you have your fingers crossed for Polka Dot Man, but alas, lying in that hospital bed is Peacemaker. This revelation almost certainly foreshadows the character's resurrection in a gun-engineered HBO Max Peacemaker series, one the filmmaker recently announced he had completed eight episodes of filming alongside Cena. Peacemaker is currently slated to debut on the streaming service in January 2022. Talk about a line that gets maximum impact with minimum dialogue. When Amanda Waller introduces Robert Dubois by saying, He's in prison for putting Superman in the ICU with a kryptonite bullet. You immediately know he's not a man to be trifled with. Alas, there is no Superman cameo in the Suicide Squad, but there is a precedent to the whole kryptonite bullet idea. Ask anyone who knows anything about the man from Krypton, and they can tell you the one way to kill Superman, kryptonite. The fictional material first appeared in the radio serial The Adventures of Superman in June of 1943, followed by its first comic book appearance in November 1949's Superman No. 61. The material originates from the hero's home planet, is generally harmless to humans, but could potentially prove lethal for the Man of Steel. Both Batman and Lex Luthor are generally known to keep some close, just in case. The character of Bloodsport dates back to 1987's Superman Vol. 2 No. 4, and has since become a longtime adversary of Superman. 
Initially depicted in that post-Rambo time period as a Vietnam veteran, he was brought into the fold by Luther, who recruited him to assassinate Superman after equipping him with a Punisher-like stash of weapons that included a gun that fired needles filled with kryptonite. This blood sport was angry at the citizens of Metropolis, saying they took for granted the freedoms he and his brother had fought hard to preserve. After Bloodsport slaughtered dozens of people, Superman intervened, taking a kryptonite bullet in the process and requiring medical attention. Take a close look at the poster for the Suicide Squad and you'll notice several Easter eggs. One is the reigning starfish, an obvious reference to Starro. It's the big bad mind-controlling monster Task Force X battles at the end of the film. Another seems to be referring to the beloved DC Comics miniseries that introduced the modern Suicide Squad and contains some of their earliest misadventures. First spotted by the site Comics Beats, the reference can be found masquerading as a palm tree frond just under the word the in the poster tagline. They're dying to save the world. Look super close and you'll see it. The word Legends. Most likely, this Easter egg refers to the warmly remembered six-issue Legends comic series DC released in 1986 and 1987. The comics featured new takes on The Flash, Justice League, and Captain Marvel, but perhaps most significantly introduced the modern incarnation of the Suicide Squad in issue number three. The series had DC heroes battling Darkseid, and the third issue had Amanda Waller organizing a Black Ops team to take on Glorious Godfrey, one of Darkseid's elites and a new god of Apocalypse. She selected Rick Flag, Bronze Tiger, Deadshot, Enchantress, and Captain Boomerang for the mission, many of whom are also featured in Gunn and David Ayres' films. Comics fans love to see a tip of the cap to those who came before, and this minor acknowledgement of John Ostrander, Len Wein, John Byrne, Carl Kessel, and others who helped build the modern Suicide Squad is a nice touch. Gunn is undoubtedly one of the most comic book savvy superfans working in Hollywood today, and this seems to be an acknowledgement that the publishing of Legends, which would have come out when he was 20 years old, was a formative experience. His demise might just get the biggest laugh in the Suicide Squad, an impressive feat in a movie filled with punchlines as potent as Bloodsport's weaponry. Emerging quietly in the background of the story, a seemingly insignificant van-driving character goes from chauffeur to tag-along to full-fledged martyr, inspiring the squad to take down Jotunheim and ultimately rebel against Waller and her program. His name is Milton, and he first gained the attention of many sharp-eyed moviegoers when he could be glimpsed in the background of the rooftop scene, striding around like he was another super-powered member of the Suicide Squad. When a fan posted a screen grab and asked, who is this dude, the Twitter-savvy filmmaker simply replied, oh that? That's Milton. Comic fans immediately leapt into action, speculating that he could be the sideshow character Milton Fine, also known as the Amazing Brainiac, or perhaps he's a gender-swapped version of the female Amazon warrior Hippolyta Milton. If true, that could lead to a connection with Wonder Woman, which could mean a Justice League and Suicide Squad crossover. Nope, it's just Milton. The stone-faced, ill-fated driver is played by Julio Ruiz, an actor who has appeared on Vice Principals, Preacher, and SWAT. If you want to see something adorable, track down a March 2021 article from Ruiz's hometown newspaper, the Laredo Morning Times. It proudly hypes up the fact that he's appearing alongside Margot Robbie, Idris Elba, and other Hollywood stars in a summer tentpole superhero film, but clearly has no idea why. Milton's barely acknowledged death triggers Harley Quinn, as does the acknowledgement from the others that they hardly realized he wasn't waiting in the van. Like the death of Javelin, it emboldens her to turn tragedy into triumph and avenge her fallen comrades. Are there any grander implications to this storyline in the DCEU? Can we look forward to a Batman-Milton team-up movie in the near future? Probably not, but you can follow Julio Ruiz on social media for more information on the mysterious Milton and where his story goes from here. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the Suicide Squad are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.